Eighth Man DVD. to know what all this excitement's about. Wish I was done eating. <laughs> you might as well give up, Jed. She's made it to the big tree. Any I'm going up after her and bring her down. That's a mighty tall tree, Jed. And she's going plumb to the top. Annie, this is something that can't be put off no longer. That girl has got to start to school. <laughs> Good, Duke. Really me. Take to that girl's finishing school. I reckon you ain't much interested in school. You'd rather be chasing a raccoon up a tree, wouldn't you? I'm afraid Ellie would, too. Oh, hello, Granny. Did you get her into a dress? I did. Got her hair up in braids, too. <laughs> I kind of favor Ellie Mae's hair hanging down nice and loose and pretty. Oh, but Jed, she's commencing to school. And a schoolgirl should wear her hair in braids. How okay. come? That's so the boy that sits behind her can stick her pigtails in the inkwell. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they get acquainted. <laughs> might work all right back in the hills, but here in the city, things is a mite different. Boys is boys and girls is girls, city or country. I bet you Ellie Mae has a boy toting her books home tonight. I'm afraid not, Granny. You see, in the school where Ellie's going, there ain't no boys there. What kind of a fool school is that? <laughs> I want Miss Drysdale to hear you. It was her idea. I might have known it. That woman is a troublemaker. She never did cotton to us living here, and she's up to something now. I'm going to learn her to mind her own business. Now, nah, hold on there. Hold on. Back up. Did Miss Drysdale done Ellie Mae a favor to get her into that school. That's what you call a girl's finishing school. Without any boys, I don't know how they even get started. Well, here I am, Paul. Ellie Mae, you are prettier than sun up. And you want to waste her on a school full of girls. Come on in. See yourself in the looking glass. Hey, that's a dress that your Aunt Pearl made for you. Hey, this is all handwork, Ellie. Pearl spent four weeks on this. And 50 cents in cash. <laughs> ah, Ellie May, you just be thankful. Why, there won't be a girl in that exclusive finishing school with a dress like this. I like the lunch I fix for you. I even throwed in a surprise for the teacher. A nice, big, fat, baked old possum. <laughs> Swimming in gopher grape. I tell you, Ellie Mae, you're gonna cut a wide path through that school. Paul, why can't I wear my regular clothes to school? Because this is Beverly Hills and girls is just... <laughs> Jed Clampett speaking. Oh, hi to there, Miss Drydale. Well, yeah, she's just about ready to go now, but she's wanting to wear her old pants and shirt, and I told her that... It is. Well, that sure is going to pleasure, Ellie. Well, thank you, Mr. Drysdale. Bye. 
Yeah, Drysdale said it'd be just fine for you to wear your old pants and shirt to that exclusive finishing school. <laughs> <laughs> Chief, your wife is here. Yes, I know you want to... Hello? Hello, hello? Hello, hello to you. Oh. Any news from Lilburn? Oh, yes, yes, he'll be in Friday. Oh, good. I rather imagine the campus will have moved away by then. Moved away? What have you done, Mrs. Drysdale? Only what you and Lilburn have been urging me to do. Be helpful. I recommended a school to Mr. Clappett for his daughter, Ellie May. Oh, well, that was very nice. What school? One befitting the daughter of a Beverly Hills multimillionaire, our most exclusive private finishing school. <laughs> Not the Willows. Where else? You and Milburn keep reminding me that under her blue jeans and faded shirt, Ellie May is as good as anyone. She is. But those girls at the Willows are insufferable snobs. They'll cut her to ribbons. Well. Don't blame me if she finds herself beyond her social and intellectual depth. I've been saying from the first that the Clampets didn't belong. I've tried to spare them this uh, humiliation. To our all heart. <laughs> <laughs> they must be on their way to the Willows. After the reception they get pay off, I rather imagine they'll be on their way to the hills or the caves or wherever it is they came from. <laughs> Mrs. Drysdale. This may cost me my position here, but there is something I must say. You are a fink. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way we go. not approve of your attending school in such casual attire. None of the other girls are wearing slacks and sweatshirts. <laughs> oh, Mama, relax. <laughs> the other girls look to me to set the pace. Tomorrow, everyone will be wearing mink sweatshirts. And then, of course, I shall switch to chinchilla. <laughs> Do you want Mother to go in and help you enroll, dear? Oh, no, darling. I'm taking the same subjects as last year. Golf, fencing, tennis, riding, history, and, and water skiing. <laughs> Do try to stick with it this time, Cynthia. You're becoming a finishing school dropout. Do <laughs> the you sent. My couturier, but of course the idea was mine. Oh, <laughs> pardonnez-moi, mademoiselle. Je cherche mademoiselle Plampé. Oh, well, I'm afraid my French is a little rusty. I am from <laughs> Oak of Chorsey. Famous Parisian fashion magazine. Uh, well, this is my own concept. Well, we cannot all be creative, n'est-ce pas? <laughs> Oh, but uh, getting back to Mademoiselle de Clempin, we understand she is unrolling here today, and naturellement, she will set a new style trend just as she always does. <laughs> Clempin? Oh, yes, they, they have just moved here from their mountain chateau to their ghastly rich swimming in oil. <laughs> Complete uh, non-conformist, fiercely original, they sometimes weave their own cloth. Oh, well, that is original. Uh, I think she is arriving. In that old trunk? Uh, that must be part of the overall motif. She spares no expense to create total effect. Well, there you are, Ellie. You want us to go in with you to see you get a good desk? I'll be all right, Carl. I see Miss Jane up yonder by the porch. Yeah, I bet you Miss Drysdale sent her over to see Ellie Field at home. She's just wearing blue jeans and a shirt and a rope for a bell. A basic, how understated, how zen. <laughs> she looks like a hillbilly. Voila! 
You have given this new vogue a name. It will sweep Paris like, like wildfire. I'm going to get my sketch pad. Here's your possum, Ellie. And remember, when you give it to the teacher, don't slop no hot gopher gravy on her. I won't, Granny. Bye-bye, Ellie. Bye, Ellie. Bye, Ellie. Bye. Learn your cipher and Ellie. And be a good girl. Bye. Cynthia, she's carrying a bucket. Uh, yes. It's the ultimate simplicity in purses. Next week, Jackie Kennedy will have one. <laughs> if she comes now, I do hope she will remember me. It would be such a thrill. <laughs> well, hi there, Miss Jane. Sure is good to see you here. Oh, she remembers me. Oh, Mademoiselle Flampe. C'est si ravissant. C'est un si grand honneur. Gosh, you might, I can't figure a word you're saying. <laughs> but they call totally back. She has even mastered the accent. See what I Who's that? For me, She's your daughter, Jed. And I ain't one for telling you how to raise her or where to send her to school. Unless, of course, you wish to ask me. <laughs> if you want to send Ellie Mae to school where there's no boys, that's your business. And you ain't going to get one word out of me. Unless you ask. Hey. You're making a mistake. <laughs> oh. Howdy there, Miss Jean. Uh, Ellie Mae, you didn't spend no time at all at school. Well, I know, Paul. I met just one girl, and then Miss Jane said we'd ought to leave. <laughs> well, I, I thought it best Ellie Mae. You didn't give the teacher her possum. Well, Miss Jane wouldn't let me. What? Oh, well, you, you see, Granny, there are a dozen teachers, and I was afraid they'd fight over it. <laughs> well, she's right. One possum wouldn't hardly feed them more than two people. That's right. I'll get busy, and tomorrow I'll bake you six possums. <laughs> Miss Jane said I had not to go back tomorrow. Why not? Well, I... You mean Ellie Mae ain't good enough for them other girls? Oh, it's not that. Let's have the truth now. Well, if you want the truth, they are not good enough for her. Ellie Mae, don't you listen to that kind of talk. Miss Jane, we don't hold with some folks thinking he's better than others. Mr. Clive, but not everyone feels that way. Anyone can get a spiteful spell now and then. Yeah, now you take Miss Drysdale. For a time there, she was treating us like we was pole cats at a picnic. <laughs> Yesterday, she turned real nice, and she told me about that school for Ellie to go to. I can see this is going to take time, and I must get back to the office now. Don't let Ellie May have anything more to do with those girls at the Willows. I declare, I never thought Miss Jane would put on airs. Me neither. Ellie May, I hope them girls over to the school didn't get the feeling that uh, you held yourself above them. I hope not, too, Paul. Why don't you invite the whole kit and caboodle of them over here for a possum supper? Granny, I just met one girl, Cynthia Fenwick. Well, invite Cynthia and her whole family. I'm doing it, Paul. <laughs> Cynthia, darling. Hi, Mommy, darling. Homework tonight, forehand bowling. <laughs> Cynthia, the most ghastly person has been falling for you today. Mommy, I don't even know any ghastly person. Precisely what I said. I said, see here, Miss Clampett, you ghastly person. Clampett? <laughs> Ellie Mae Clampett has been calling me? Yes. Oh. And she had the cheek to invite us to her home. I suspect the kidnap plot. She has the strangest accent. <laughs> Mommy, the Clampets are the avant-garde social leaders of the season. Are you serious? Dreadfully oh. serious. You mean we should accept? Don't just accept. Call them immediately and beg to be invited. Beasley, where's the nearest phone? Front seat or back? Front seat. <laughs> I tell you, Granny, I never talked to nobody so pitiful anxious to come for vittles as them Fenwicks. He must have fell on hard times, Jim. Be. You know, it turns out she's a winter woman. Oh, Ellie May, uh, Miss Fenwick called back and she's coming for supper, her and Cynthia. Oh, good, Paul. Cynthia sure looked like she could use some vittles. Powerful, skinny girl. I told you, Jed, they fell on hard times. <laughs> That's a fact. Cynthia was wearing the oldest looking clothes I ever did see. She was? Had on the first she must have outgrowed 15 years ago. 
could barely come to her middle. <laughs> and her pants had been worn till his plump shine. Poor Ma's in worse shape than she is. That poor old widow ain't got nothing to wear. You don't say. Well, I must have shamed her something terrible to have to say it, but right on the telephone, she asked me, did she have to dress for dinner? <laughs> your every whim. I've been a very generous and I've been a very understanding mother, but I refuse to go to dinner in blue jeans. Oh, mummy, either we go dressed in the height of fashion or I shall hold my breath until I turn purple. I think how that will go with this orange pen one. <laughs> but dear, they're not showing blue jeans, not in Vogue, not in Harper's, and every couturier we've called has hung up on us. Now, how can they be fashionable? Because Ellie Mae Clampett has decreed it. Think of it, Mommy. We can wear them before Princess Grace and Jackie Kennedy. Ooh. Are they going to be in the Clampett still? <laughs> no, Mommy. And neither will we, unless I can find some blue jeans. I best call Ellie Mae and explain why we're running late. Well, sure, Cynthia. You and your mom just take your time. That's all right. Bye. Paul, you sure was right about them folks being hard up. They's gonna be late because they can't find clothes to wear. <laughs> Ellie Mae, you're thinking about the same thing I am. Take them some of mine. I had it done in a way that don't rob them of their pride. <laughs> yes, Roy, I want you to drive Ellie Mae. She's going over to Fenwick's to take them some clothes. Oh, yes, sir. Well, they can have some of mine, too. Mine, too. That's the spirit. Come on, General. <laughs> This is it, all right, Ellie. It says right on it, Fenwick, huh? <laughs> Drinking, no one's home. That's good. We can leave these clothes without shaming them none. Yeah, I'll set them right inside the door. <laughs> Look at Ellie. Just one teensy little room. And not a stick of furniture in it. <laughs> hey, and look. He's trying to grow a little garden right here in this box. No wonder poor Cynthia is so thin. There ain't enough in there to feed a baby rabbit. <laughs> Cynthia! Perhaps we could buy blue jeans, already made, at a, um, what do they call it, um, a clothing store. <laughs> oh, my. Well, you needn't be crude about it. And you like those bars, eh? Yes, Grayson. Mommy, are you expecting a caller? There seems to be someone at the gatehouse. No, dear. No, Jason. Mommy, the gatehouse. The gardeners sometimes leave work clothes there. Surely you're not suggesting that <laughs> this is an emergency. I shall dash right down to the gatehouse and have a look. Jason, have the car brought around immediately. <laughs> it would have broke your heart to see where they live. Their whole house ain't no bigger than a chicken coop. They don't even have a place to roost. Not one stick of furniture. No fiddles except some little old greens that's trying to grow in a bar. <laughs> Just pitiful. You know, I always wondered why the Lord give us so much, but I reckon this is the reason. He wanted us to share with poor, needy folks like the Witter Fennec and her young'un. Now, Ellie Mae brought him some clothes. Granny is going to give him some food. What they need now is furnishings for that poor little house of theirs. <laughs> now, quick, let's load up the truck before they get here. Granny and Ellie, you get some dishes and some eating tools. Jethro and me, you'll find us some furniture. I want you youngins to learn something now that I hope will abide with you for the rest of your days. The greatest joy of living is a joy that comes from giving. <laughs> Clap it, they're 
actually moving. You sure you only got room for one bed, Jethro? Just barely. Reckon it'll be big enough for the both of them? All I hear from Ellie, that Cynthia Fenwick is so skinny you couldn't hit her with a handful of corn. things out. I hope you're not angry over Ellie May's experience at the Willows, but apparently it did open your eyes. It sure did. We didn't know there was people like the Fenwicks in Beverly Hill. The Fenwicks? Did Ellie May meet Cynthia Fenwick? Yes, ma'am. That's how come we's loading all this stuff up ah, on it. Jethro, no use robbing folks of their pride. <laughs> He's right, Jethro. The less said, the better. Just load up and go. <laughs> we's hurrying quick as we can. Let me help. <laughs> yeah, that's mighty neighborly of you. I'll go see how Granny and Ellie's getting along in the kitchen. the most understated and zen of all. <laughs> you, Cynthia Fenwick, you little darling. <laughs> Come to the mirror, Mums. Let's see how you look. <laughs> I can't look. I just can't. Don't be silly. Now, here's your bucket. Bucket? Well, it's part of the clamp, but look, now, of course, you must picture your hair in braids. <laughs> <laughs> really? Jason, come quickly. Bring some cold champagne to pour over Mummy. It doesn't matter. Any vintage year will do. <laughs> I never seen a woman so overcome with the spirit of giving as Mrs. Drysdale. She's still toting things out. I wish she'd get the spirit and start giving some of her own things. If you don't let up soon, I may hint about that. Jed Clampett speaking. Oh, howdy there, Miss Cynthia. Y'all coming over today? Well, I'm afraid Mommy's not well. Uh, might we have a rain check? Why, you betcha you can. Just a minute. Uh, Granny, is it going to rain tonight? <laughs> All the signs point to it. <laughs> Granny says yes. You'd best keep your maw inside and in the dry tonight. <laughs> well, I, I shall. Uh, how about tomorrow? Uh, just a minute. How about tomorrow, Granny? Fair and sunny. <laughs> Granny says tomorrow will be fine. You all come over and spend the whole day. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Thank you and bless you. We are so deeply grateful to you for your kindness and understanding. Well, I'd, I'd really just love to say more, but Mummy's fainted and I must attend to her. Well, yes, ma'am, you do that. Them Fenwicks is so overcome by that little show of kindness of ours that uh, Cynthia just about bawling and the widow fainted dead away. <laughs> Jeff, you best come see the Mrs. Drysdale. I'm afraid she's going to strain something working the way she is. Yeah, I'll tend to that, Jethro. You get the truck undercover before it rains. <laughs> Ellie, we got to get upstairs and close them windows. <laughs> you moving tomorrow, you promise? I'm gonna spend the whole day just making the Fenwings happy. And me. I'll come here early to help. Well, why don't you just rest up tomorrow? You must be all tuckered out. No, no. I shall be here early. <laughs> Never did see such a change of heart come over a woman. Jed! 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 Well, Granny, let's have vittles early so we can all get to sleep early. Tomorrow's a big day. Ain't none of us gonna get to sleep early tonight, Jed Clampett. Why not? 
Miss Drysdale done emptied out all 12 bedrooms. <laughs> This has been a Filmways presentation. Eighth Man DVD.